Oh, sorry about that. My uh, phone decided to fill up on the storage, and I basically spent the rest of the day taking video files from my phone, sticking them on my computer. Um, so it's a new day. Uh, nothing has changed since two seconds ago. Um, we've just got to paint the the metal uh, and the feathers and then do some ground cover. So this should be the last few minutes of the uh, of the build. I have decided though, so right here we've got what is now dry bronze. I'm gonna go with brass instead. So we'll just some metal. Okay, so on here we've got the scepter, the crown, and I'm going to paint all these little uh, trinkets the exact same. And this will probably, I'm putting this down really thin so that you don't get any, so you don't see any brush strokes in it. Um, metal, uh, metal paints tend to especially acrylics. Metal acrylics tend to show off um, streaks really well. Um, Phileo has a paint range called Liquid Gold, um, which uh, is an alcohol-based paint. Um, it's really nice. Uh, you need to use um, like don't use uh, your series 7 paint brushes with it Once this is dry, I'm going to just very sp uh, targeted run some of the, the, the washes through here to pull out some of the details, but I'm not going to, I'm not just going to slop the uh, uh, wash all over it. Basically, I just want Uh, want these uh, like this line detail to pick up the wash um, Too much water in the paint. It's almost a wash. Dangerous at this point because I can 
will run the risk of getting this uh, this brass color just run all over the place. These little things that are dangling all over the place. I could do these with like a few different metallics, but I, I I personally like trying to keep my color palette small. Um, but that's just me. I'm not going to be able to... Um, do any top coating on these because uh, it's pouring pretty hard outside um, and it is just I have a I use an enamel top coat um, and the weather is just not not good for it um, but it's it's the same process as uh, the when I was priming. Um, you just go outside, shake up a rattle can of Tester's Dull Coat or the Krylon um, top coat, uh, which I think is a bit more durable. Uh, and then you just spray the minis. Uh, and then you've top coated. Uh, oh, that's all the metal. Okay, so we just have to do the feather. Um, a lot of people will tell you to to change your water after you've used metallics because you will get the metal pigment uh, flakes now in your water which means you're as you do this you will end up with pigments or metallic flakes in your uh, in your brush um, that is good advice I would follow that um, I've generally never had a problem with it but uh, in this case, I would say, do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, I'm also a brush licker. Uh, don't do that. Uh, especially if you're jumping between, like, uh, reasonably non-toxic acrylic paints, but then also using um, other paints that are solvent-based. Because obvious reasons that's uh you don't want to do that okay so we're going to paint one feather this color uh, and we're going to do the other feather in purple we'll just do this uh, and i'm just gonna try and do this on camera and be slightly sloppier with this one because I'm going to paint this this top one is like overlapping on top of this one um, get 
on camera. And then I'm just going to hit this with a, like a black wash um, once it's dry. I could use like a dark blue wash. Uh, same with this, I could use a, a purple wash. Uh, so this is violet, five, six, zero. And the, this one is Andrea blue, which is eight, four, one. Um, you can buy all these paints uh, separately. Um, you can also buy large sets. I think both of these came in a a box set specifically for uh, painting uh, like Napoleonic figures, um, which I don't do. It just had a lot of the just a set that had a bunch of colors that I was looking for uh, and it was on sale. Um, I use this color quite a lot, I've, I've noticed. Again, stay on camera. This is basically it for painting uh, simians. We're gonna do a little bit of ground cover while these last few bits dry. Um, and then once I get the ground cover on, we'll see how dry these things are. Um, get some wash on it. On it onto them uh, and then magnetize the bases. Which I guess we can do that right now. Where are my magnets? Right here. All this other, doing all this other stuff right now will give uh, this stuff time to dry. Uh, so we're taking these 25 mil discs from Litco. This is just a, a sticker back and it's it's actually kind of frustrating to, oh, never mind, that one was pretty easy to, sometimes it's a little bit tougher to pop those off. Uh, so you just drop that down, sort of fiddle with it until it's roughly centered, put it back on the ground, push it down. Now this will stick to my toolbox. And then this one. Oh. Again. Drop it down. Wiggle it around until it's centered. Push it down. That's that's that. Okay, so we are now going to get some ground cover. The way I do my ground cover, uh, um, a lot of people like to just buy um, like wall filler or spackle, uh, smear that around and then paint it brown um, and then put glue on top and dip it into, you know, sand or, or um, some sort of flock. Um, some, some people just, you know, they'll put the spackle on and, and sculpt it up as, uh, to sort of mimic like, uh, rock. Uh, so you paint it gray and you dry brush it a few times with a, a variety of different, um, shades of gray. And then you've got like a rocky cover or you just paint it 
uh, with a bunch of different greens and it'll just sort of look like um, like grass uh, but it's just painted spackle um, what I like to do is use this stuff this is uh, basically sand and glue and paint pre-smashed together. Um, I really love this stuff. Um, so I'll use this same way that everyone uses spackle to build up, basically just get enough on there to hide um, the integrated base and the like blend the two the uh, the flat disc and the, the integrated piece of base from the mini um, I don't get too much under there because it, it this stuff's a bit hard to control which we'll see in a minute um, because the next step will be once I get this on um, get some school glue so this is just uh, PVA glue and get this from I mean this this is just cheap PVA glue uh, get a little bit on top of the mud and then dip it into uh, green flock um, this the flock that I'm using I think I got this like 15 years ago at a games workshop store um, I don't know if GW still makes this specific flock, but uh, if you go to um, uh, m most hobby supply stores or model stores, uh, or I guess probably on Amazon as well, um, you can get like flock from Woodland Scenics, um, and you can get like you know like a liter jug of it for. 10 bucks or something um it's not wildly expensive um and like i said th i've had this stuff for like 15 years um the this i transfer a l like uh, a flock into this little bin so that it's easier to work with because i it came in like a 500 gram bag i want to say um uh sorry to my american pals i don't know what that translates to in ounces. Um, let's say two cups. It's about two, the bag was about two cups worth a flock. Um, but I I just use this little thing because it's a an actual bin um, instead of not even a Ziploc bag. Um, okay. This is glue. A big tub of, well, it's probably like gesso or matte gesso medium or something like that. Um, do not need, do not use brushes that you care about, including your sort of your like if you've got like a bunch of army painter brushes. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to the dollar store or you want to go to Michaels and you want to buy the big bag of these artist loft artist loft brushes i bought a bag of like 50 brushes and it's not all the same brush it's you get like four or five of these ones a bunch of different sizes um you just get a like a huge array of of uh brushes but they're all cheap like you can see this thing's not uh straight um like it's got a huge curve to it which is uh you know whatever um but all of the like so it was i think it was 20 bucks for a bag of 50 so you're paying uh and th so that's in canadian dollars so i was paying like 50 cents per brush um which you know that that's probably more like somewhere between 35 and 
40 cents US per brush, which is fine because you can clean these up and if you end up throwing them out, it's not a real problem. Um, that's how much I paid for this tub of, that, that's 20 bucks. Um, I, you can get this stuff cheaper. I just happened to have got it from a local modeling store. Uh, and, you know, that's what it looks like. We're just gonna put a blob. Um, I know Games Workshop makes like texture pastes, um, but if we put that right there for a second, this is the bottle size. This is the large bottle size. Uh, Right. These ones are like six or seven bucks. This you can probably get for 15 bucks. So there's the, this is 24 mil. This is 200 mil. So if you're, if you're buying pre-made paste, this is way, uh, uh, way more worth your your money than the the smaller uh, tubs uh, working time is pretty decent um, uh, and it's water soluble too so we'll just again on camera kind of blot that down like that and then we just sort of work it in Trying to be uh, careful with this so that I don't get any of this mud. Uh, here. We'll clean some of this up in a minute. Put that down there. Hold on to this one. Uh, and because this has a A decent dry time um, we can we can get this slop down onto a, a few minis come back with a bit of water to smooth it out because obviously these spiky bits look stupid um, and we also want to make sure that, you know, we don't have it in weird spots. We don't want dirt on top of their feet. So I'm now going to start bringing some of this up into the top. Bit more so that uh, this will also like shrink a bunch, um, not a bunch, but it, it will shrink. So that one's that's fine. I'm not gonna just rinse this off, uh, we're no longer painting, so um, my 
little dish of super dirty water can get extra super dirty. And so it does clean out. Uh, but now, with a wet brush, you can come back in, uh, reactivate some of this. And once we start getting more water into it, it will it'll smooth out and flatten down, which is what we want. Uh, and I'm also going to, so I got some dirt up in here. I'm going to use the water to get it off of that. All this out. Once this is all dry, I'm going to come back and I could wipe all this stuff off, but um, I find it easier to just with a with a, a hobby knife just scrape it off. Actually, I want to paint the... Uh, I want to paint the rim as well, so we will wipe it off with our finger. Just, just do this. Got to be a little bit more careful now because I've got. Paint on my fingers. So there's that. sides cleaned up so now we'll be able to get a nice line of paint around that uh, and you can you can line the edges of your bases however you want um, all of my minis get lined with uh, German camo medium brown um, I just like it, the, it, this paint blends real nice with this mud texture, um, and I personally don't look the, the like the look of like a big fat black um, rim around the minis. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit because uh, it just has to does it have to it's yeah it's got to dry for a little bit before we flock it that it's it's wet with water the it's probably not very adhesive at this point um if we did it quick enough i probably could have put the mud on and then immediately dipped it into this um but whatever we'll let this dry uh i'm going to go make coffee and then we will flock it, paint the base, uh, so while we're here we should, we'll do this real quick, I'm just going to detail these, uh, these metallic bits that we we just painted so this is just what we're trying to do is uh, just get some uh, wash into uh, the details so that the the details pop but I don't want 
I don't want to shift the colors on these, so. so this is the nice thing about having a brush with a very fine tip on it is that I can very easily get it into some of these recesses. Oops, sorry. Uh, and here we've kind of got a little bit of extra. So I'm going to just run some black up there to hide some of that. Uh, Same on this side. Sorry, I'm holding this in like a really stupid position because I don't have much to hold on to because the base is all uh, covered in mud. I'm already getting a little bit on me, so I gotta be careful. Uh, and we'll get some. These ones can be a little bit. Same with this. So that's that guy. I don't even think I need more. Uh, so we'll get a bit there, a little bit there, there, there. Then we run. This still looks a little wet, so I'm not gonna. Um, It's just glossy paint, I guess. There, it's a little bit of texture. Do it on the back side. There. So now all we have to do is flock this guy, which we'll do. Uh, coming up next. Okay, we are now at the uh, last little bit of uh, getting these minis finished, all we have to do is get some grass on uh, on the bases, uh, and then get some paint on the rims. Um, so the way we're going to do that, uh, school glue. Uh, I have to take the lid off because the, the little twisty thing is busted, uh, but you could just squeeze some glue out. Uh, onto your palette. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to put uh, grass on, on this guy. Um, I uh, have decided that all my Age of Ice uh, expansion figures will have uh, a winter base. Um, I just haven't committed to that yet, so I'm going to leave them as uh, mud for now. So this guy's pretty much done, aside from just putting a rim there. So we're just going to put grass on this guy. It's very simple. Uh, first, we want to make sure this lid is open. I'm not going to dilute the, the glue at all. That can just go there. Uh, yeah, this I'm just going to squeeze up until I see some glue come up. Grab a bunch like that. Put this guy. And then just blob this on. This. Uh, get some back 
here, trying not to get glue on uh, him. Uh, if we do, we can we can wipe it off or uh, more easily wipe off the uh, the flock once it's. Uh, no, sorry, I've got. I feel like I might be getting a cold or something. Um, be easier to wipe off the flock uh, instead of trying to clean up any glue mistakes. Do that. Get them into the thing. Get all this. Right. So we're just trying to get as much flock on there as possible. Just gonna tap that off. Wipe off the excess. That. There. Done. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is go around the edges, clean up the edges. Uh, so now you can now you can see why I don't spend a load of time on getting the mud down because in this instance you don't actually see any of the mud and sculpting up mud with uh, uh, or ground cover with uh, Spackle just uh, it takes longer than than I want to spend time on it. Um, okay, so now we are going to just trim out the uh, the. just realized this is this is the, the brown that I was having problems with the other day uh, so we're just gonna take paint from right there uh, I do have I did purchase of like a whole bunch of these ones because uh, I basically generally only use this paint for doing the rims uh, and want to make sure that I've got lots of it in case uh, Vallejo changes uh, or discontinues this specific paint that would annoy me a ton um, to find out that uh, I have to change the color of my bases. Um, so, and then we're just uh, painting the rim. And I'm not, I'm not too precious about uh, super smooth looking rims just as long as it's it'll look clean from a few feet away so um, I don't want to put this on the paper because it'll obviously there's there's no paint on the bottom I've just got a, a roll of tape that I'll use as a, a way to prop up Minis while it dries. I'm just gonna stick my brush down into this somewhat disassembled and ready to rinse out bottle. Get some more paint.
And so I'm probably going to flock this guy uh, with like a white flock to make it look like fresh snow um, or maybe uh, mix white flock um, with like a, a gloss like phileos um, gloss varnish uh, or a hard coat from Games Workshop or hard coat whatever it's called um, that way you get like a a nice uh, icy texture um, so I'll I'll do that um, with all my Age of Ice minis uh, so it would be the same as brushing this on only instead of brown uh, it would be white uh, and it would look um, it would be sort of translucent and um, glossy, so it'll have like a, a wet snow um, or a, a ice look to it. Um, and then I will use uh, a white flock that is substantially finer than this. Um, in the exact same way. So you put glue on it uh, and then just dip it in a white version of this. Um, and then you've got uh, fresh snow on top of ice, um, and which is then again on top of the, the earth. Um, so you'll get like a very natural looking um, muddy, Earth. I could even uh, put the green flock on this uh, and then put some white ice over top of it uh, and then white flock over top of that and you get um, uh, like snowy grass, um, maybe like uh, sort of the first snowfall of, of the season kind of thing where you've got um, wet snow on top of not quite dead yet grass um but yeah that's that's that and these guys are now I'll just drop them all over the place uh simians are now complete i think they both look pretty good this guy is uh surprisingly more yellow uh, on camera. I might, I might slap another brown wash on them just to uh, kill that. It's not as yellow uh, off camera, but yeah, it looks kind of weird on camera. Um, looks a little bit more even in real life. Um, yeah, so this guy's an encounter, and you'll only see him, you know, I, there's 13 encounters currently. They come up randomly, and then my group, we randomize which encounter comes out. Uh, so you basically, will at this point, we'll be rolling like a D13, um, or, you know, whatever, we'll randomly generate numbers between 1 and 13 to figure out which encounter uh, so him showing up is like pretty minimal, um, whereas this guy is actually uh, a boss figure. Um, but yeah, I will uh, try and grab a photo of these and stick them on at the end of this video, or maybe at the beginning of this video, um, or just post them photos into uh, the Facebook group once this sort of bottom side uh, has dried up fully. Um, yeah, so that's that's uh, how to paint simians anyway. Um, the next set of figures I do, um, I think I might time lapse it. 
so that it's not four hours or three hours or however long this has been so far. Um, unless you want uh, really long videos. Um, but I might might figure out how to add some background music so that it's not I don't, it's not just dead air uh, or me trying to fill the air for four hours. Uh, or maybe what I'll do is see if Palmer, who is who runs the uh, Heresy Productions YouTube channel, he's also uh, a Savage Core player, um, and I believe he's in. The Savage Core group. Um, we'll see. Maybe, maybe Palmer will want to do some uh, live painting on a hangout or something. I don't know. I'll. Uh, that's just. I haven't even talked to him about that. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I will uh, go through a few of the techniques. That we, because it'll be different than these guys, because uh, this was mostly dry brushing, um, whereas the the uh, other figures will be um, like layering uh, paints to build up highlights. Um, so I'll, but maybe what I'll do is uh, show the techniques once, and then time lapse or speed up the video so that uh, you can skip me watch skip me real time painting everything. So you just saw me real time paint uh, two minis um, which uh, if you're not you know dealing with all this camera stuff and 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 you're just sitting down and doing it, um, you could probably paint up the entire Simeon faction. Um, so this guy, uh, six bods, uh, and the original, or actually the, the two original um, other bosses. So the Simeons have nine minis, or no, there are eight, eight bods uh, and three bosses um, and and then there's this uh, encounter chap um, which gives you currently there are 12 uh, monkeys um, and so you could probably paint all 12 in the same time that this entire sort of video series has taken um, if you just sort of sit down and throw in a movie, um, it'd probably take the length of a movie um, to go through all this stuff. Um, the only things you did not see were were the spots where um, some of the techniques required, you know, 20 minutes to dry. Um, but otherwise, that's everything for the Simeons. Uh, the next series will be um, the other four encounters, I think. I think I want to do them before I move on to the Maxans. Um, cause the Maxans are going to be a lot of gold, and that'll be uh, a whole thing. Anyway, um, we'll see you for uh, the next tutorial um, where we go through uh, another set of figures. Uh, until then, peace out.